guys, I'm here with Tamar Caprelli of Hi. Genealogy, Armenia 2015. Tamar, how are you? I am fabulous. How are you? I'm good, and you look fabulous also. Have you ever considered going to modeling? You know, I, um, when I was about eight or nine, I modeled a little bit, dabbled in it. Um, and I decided that it was taking too much of my time. Like, I was getting pulled out of school yeah. quite a bit, and my parents were just like, this is ridiculous. Like, you need to concentrate in school. You can't be doing this crap. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your question, I have done it, but I, I don't do it now. Uh, would you ever get back into it? Um, yeah, I mean, if the, if the right opportunity presented itself, yeah, absolutely. It would be fun. Wonderful. Um, so you've been all over the place in the U.S. You were originally from Scottsdale, and then you moved to SoCal, and you mm -hmm. moved to Atlanta, and now you are here in New York, where we're filming this today. Uh -huh. So what brought you here to New York? So I have been in New York about three years, uh, a little over three years, and I came here because I'm going to school here. Wonderful. I go to Columbia. Cool. University. You major in, what are you majoring in? I'm majoring in 19th century British literature. Interesting. So, so <laughs> specific and so, like, very particular. You have some British uh, ancestry in you, right? Your parents mm -hmm. are from Britain originally? Yes, my dad is from Manchester. Uh, and his, it's actually interesting, like, his mother's Irish and his father is um, Armenian. Okay. So, uh, and then he grew up in, in England and my parents met in England and then they moved to the States. Oh, is your mom Armenian at all? My mom is full Armenian, yes. Okay. Do you speak like Armenian at home with your parents? Have you learned Armenian? I, so I spoke Armenian before um, I spoke English. I spoke Armenian, mm. I, I couldn't speak English until I was five. Really? Uh-huh. So, and I learned English while I was going to, um, while I was going to school, when, when I started kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we do, that's that's what we speak at home. Really cool. Um, so now we're gonna move on to a little bit more about Eurovision, of course, cool. which is why we are all here yeah, today. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Um, <laughs> so, um, have you followed ESC in past years? I have, well, because my parents are not from America, um, yeah, I mean, I you know, they grew up watching it, uh, and as a result of them moving here, we'd always watch it you know, growing up in the house. Um, my uncle still to this day stays up until like two o'clock in the morning his time in Arizona just to watch it. So it's it's a very, it's kind of like ingrained within within the family. And like some of my, one of my favorite, favorite artists of all time, a band really of all time, you know, won Eurovision and kind of got, they got their start from Eurovision, so. Really cool. So um, you obviously have heard of it before. Have you ever thought about performing in it until this year? You know, it, it's funny you ask that because a couple years ago, it was like this Facebook page that was started that was like Tamar Caprelian for Eurovision. Like people were trying to get the Armenian, like you know, because it's it's Armenian TV is the one that does the selections. Yes. Um, so they were trying to get Armenian TV's um, attention, mm -hmm. and they started this Facebook page like trying to get them to put me, to, you know, to get me to represent Armenia. So it, it's and and it's something that I've always like. You know, it's obviously an honor to mm -hmm. be able to represent your country in something like this. So, yeah, I mean, but but honestly, you think about it, but you never think, oh yeah, it's gonna absolutely out of out of God knows how many people that you know that could be a part of this. I'm gonna be selected for this, and never never really crosses your mind. So it's you know it's really really exciting. So as you mentioned before, you mentioned that uh, there was the Facebook page on Armenian television mm -hmm. a couple years ago for that. Um, mm -hmm. So, would you represent Armenia solo in the future if you were given the opportunity? If I was given the opportunity, I would absolutely love to do that. Wonderful. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, again, it, it's such an honor to be able to do something like this, to be able to represent your country on, in such a cool, in such a cool and creative way. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yes, if the opportunity made itself possible, you know, then I, I, w I would do it without question. Wonderful. Um, so back to the genealogy discussion. Um, you met in Armenia a few weeks ago mm -hmm. with um, Asai and Vahe and Mary and Stephanie mm -hmm. and the unknown Armenian artist. Mm -hmm. um, you met to meet and record the video and um, so Genealogy is a manufactured group, and there have been quite a few of them in um, Eurovision, such as Bonaparte LV, or Pirates of the Sea, or uh, Cosmos, and they, um, 
sometimes they have good chemistry, right. sometimes they don't. Do you right. think genealogy will be able to pull off chemistry even though it's six of you from all over the world thrown together, thrown together for this um, one thing? Yeah, it's tricky, right? Because like, you have six different personalities, you just never know if, if, if you're going to connect, if you're going to clash, it's just like, you know, it's six different egos, right? But we're coming, well, A, the chemistry between us is fantastic. Um, we, you know, it's interesting when you're, we, we each represent the diaspora, the Armenian mm -hmm. diaspora, right? Like I, I, you know, it's my dad kind of explains this in a cool way. Like as Armenians, you're kind of seeds that have been dispersed all over the world. Mm -hmm. And it's like coming to, and this is like one of those opportunities where you come together and you unite. Um, and you know, we're all there with a common purpose, a common goal. It's to do something for our country. Um, it's to make our country proud um, and you know when when you look at it from that perspective all ego goes to one side and you're there for a purpose and you know and, and you get along and, and we all do and I think that you know you'll definitely be able to see the great chemistry that we all have on stage when we perform in May. So how did the idea of genealogy come to be? So I you know, obviously we had nothing to do with it. We just we just got emails mm -hmm. uh, from your managers, from from management, from the TV company, kind of asking mm -hmm. asking us if we wanted to participate in it. Um, but I think the whole idea was that we want to do something that brings the Armenian diaspora together. Something you know, we want to convey a message of unity. We want to convey a message of peace, and we want to convey a message of love. Okay. So I think that that was the you know, and it, and it's something different, right? Which which I think is really cool. It really is kind of uniting five continents together. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just kind of, it's kind of left of center and it's kind of interesting and, mm -hmm. it's, and you know, and it works for us. Um, and, I, and I think it's a good representation of, of who we are as, as a country. So we just wanted to do something that was very true to us. Um, so you rose to fame originally through the contest for One Republic, mm -hmm. where you covered Apologize. Yeah. You did an amazing cover. Thank so you. how did you get the idea to do this? So my producer at the time, Sandy Berry, who I've worked with for a long, long time, um, it's so funny. I vividly remember getting a call from him. I was, I was uh, driving along the beach, and I had stopped to get gas because I was. I was running out of gas and I always run out of gas when I'm driving cars for some reason. Um, panic mode. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was I was stopped and like I saw him calling me, I picked up and he's like, Tamar, I have this idea. He's like, tell me if you think this is crazy. I just want your opinion. I said, okay, cool. So he said, you know, One Republic is doing this thing where on their website you can do a contest, like it's a basically a contest. You can do a cover of their song. The song's blowing up right now. Um, and you upload it to YouTube and then you like actually submit it through there through their website, and I said, oh, you know, like, okay, fine, I'll do it, I'll go listen to the song, because I hadn't heard the song. So, I went home, and I listened to the song, and I really loved the song. I had heard of Ryan Tedder previously, prior to him actually being in One Republic, because mm -hmm. I'm not sure many people know this, but he's a he's a very, very successful songwriter, mm -hmm. um, as well as being an artist in a band. Um, he's written a number of songs for Beyonce, he's written songs for um, Natasha Battingfield, for, um, you know, Adele, like, you you know, you name it, he's he's written a song for them, um, and he's amazing. So, I had heard of him before, I really loved the song, I went home, I listened to it, I said, okay, like, let me just fiddle on the piano, let me figure out if I can, like, make the song go to my key, because he sings a little bit lower than I do. I was like, okay, figured it out, did one take, I was like, okay, cool, done. <laughs> like, <laughs> gonna submit this, not expecting anything from it, obviously. Right, you just do it because it's a cool idea. Right. Um, submitted it, and I'm so happy that I checked because, like, YouTube has this like weird mail system where I guess you can send emails through YouTube, which I didn't really like. Mm -hmm. I didn't really like. I never check it. I still don't check it. Right? right. So I submitted it, and then two weeks later, I was like, maybe I should just check my YouTube mail to see, you know, if I've gotten anything. And 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 I had. And they told me I won. And then I got a record deal through. Amazing. Yeah, so it was just one of those. That is a great story. That's one of those weird things. Yeah. You know? And then I ended up working with Ryan Tedder on my album, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. How was that? It was amazing. Um, that song, Sinner or Saint, um, on my album, which I sent you. Perfect. Uh, he and I wrote together. Really nice. Mm -hmm. So um, now you've had two really big singles, mm -hmm. um, which I, well, I think 
I think New Day, two, New Day, New Day right. and California, and California right? right? Those are the two big ones, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so can you uh, talk maybe about New Day, which is probably your biggest one of them? Yeah, so New Day is a song about, um, you know, we obviously as human beings, we all go through a lot of stuff in life, right? Mm -hmm. Some of it's good stuff, some of it's really bad stuff. So this song is kind of about, um, regardless of, of all the bad stuff that happens in your life, at the end of the day, everything's going to be fine. And mm -hmm. at the end of every day, there's a new beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of this record was about new beginnings. And a lot of my, a, a lot of what I tend to focus lyrically when I'm writing songs is, is, mm -hmm. is about that. Um, I tend not to write that much about relationships and more about like kind of a bigger picture theme. Um, a lot of the, the, I'm actually releasing some new material in May, Wonderful. right after, where well, right after Eurovision, uh, and again, you, you kind of what you'll see is that it's it's about, it's about kind of soul searching, um, it's about finding love within yourself, and then if you love yourself, you love everybody else, right? Perfect. So that's kind of that's kind of what I tend to go towards thematically when I'm writing when okay. I'm writing my material. So you're releasing new material in May, mm -hmm. yeah. as you just confirmed yeah. for us. Would you ever be interested in releasing uh, material in Armenian? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's interesting that you ask that question. I will be working on um, a song or two uh, in Armenian this summer after, really? after I do Eurovision. I just think that it's, you know, it's something that I never really dabbled with only because I, I didn't really. I guess I didn't really know like producers in Armenia. Okay. That was that was part of the that was part of the. Um, it wasn't necessarily a problem. It was just part of the circle. Like it was just it was what was going on at yeah. the time, right? Didn't really know many people in Armenia. Didn't know many producers in Armenia because I'd never really I'd never been the mm -hmm. the first time that I went was this past summer. Um, so, you know, I but I you know having having now done this or at least in the process of doing this, I really want to be able to connect with people over there because it's important to me, um, my culture is important to me, the language is important to me, and it would be nice to be able to do something different um, musically as well. Okay. Um, so even though you've only been to Armenia twice, mm -hmm. um, you already have like a celebrity status over there. <laughs> so do your American friends um, Think know about this um, celebrity status over there, or are you just plain old Tamar to them? Well, uh, no, I'm definitely just plain old Tamar to them, and you know, I, I don't, I don't really like think about that stuff, right? Like, I'm not, and I, and this is part of like how I view music. I'm not doing this to be famous, right? Like, that's not the celebrity thing is not something right. that really interests me, and it doesn't really drive me. Um, it never has, uh, and. I just want to write music, um, record music, release music that's awesome and that people connect with, that's honest. You know, when you write honest material, that's when people pe people connect to it, when it's when it's real to you. Um, so, you know, if, if I can do things with integrity and do it honestly, at the end of the day, that is the only thing that's important to me. All the rest of it is just, you know, it's just like sprinkles on a cake, icing on a cake. Okay. Um, so finally, we have come to the end of this interview. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for giving me the time to Wee Wee Blogs about thank this. Thank you. Um, so do you have a message for the readers of Wee Wee Blogs? Absolutely. I am. I'm, I'm going to say this to camera, obviously. Of course. Um, hey guys, I am so excited to be doing this. I would love to connect with you guys on social media. I'm on social media all the time. Um, I think you actually tweeted something. Yes, we did. From, did you do it on Instagram too? Yes, it's on Instagram. It's on, so, it is on Instagram, yeah, right? It's, but it's does on it Instagram. connect to Twitter too? Um, well, it's not connected right yet because I don't have the Twitter stuff. But So find, <laughs> so find <laughs> me on social media. Connect with me. I would love to talk to you guys. I'm, I'm always available. Um, and I'm so, so excited for you guys to hear, our, um, to hear the song. It's coming out March 12th. Uh, the video is coming out that day too. Um, very excited to uh, hear what you guys think and, and, you know, very excited for you guys to see um, our performance uh, in May. Wonderful. Everyone, Tamar Caprillion. Goodbye. Thank you very much for <laughs> watching. We're subscribed to WeWe.tv and we will see you later in Vienna. Bye.